Hey guys, welcome back to 9 to 5 Tactical, and today we have the Chris Vector, aka the Fennec, in Call of Duty Modern Warfare series. So the model we have here today, uh, the STP, comes with an MSRP of 1349 Now you can get other colors and multicam, but that costs a bit more at $1669. That was now 0.85. Oh, this brace. Ooh, no. 9.7. This right. buttstock loves to twist like crazy. I hit the charging handle before I hit the slide release. The slide release isn't really in my natural grip, so it felt natural to just hit the charging handle, then go back to C grip. Um, for the mag release, I'd rather have it on the right side. It felt weird having it right here in the front, because going from here, having to hit here, then grabbing the mag, then putting it back in, then hitting the button or hitting the charging handle, it's, it's kind of funky to me. Low Borax is really nice as far as like shooting it, but you definitely need a riser on your optic because trying to cheat this thing as well as your hand all the way up here with a high Boraxes kind of sucks. <laughs> oh lord. It's really like this on my shoulder. God! Holding a gangster style. Oh my lord. Trying to get it back in there, there is not really a mag well. So it has to be like perfect going in there. The way such letters are set up with my thumb, I have small hands. So when I'm trying to go in there, I have the issue of not being that slicer very easily. Uh, I can barely reach it, honestly. I can't get like a full purchase on it. I'd like barely grip the edge of it. Basically that little lip right there is what I'm hitting. So it slows me down trying to push it down. Okay. So. Got baby hands. And that brace keeps rotating. It's so annoying. Not like that stock brace. Are we coming again? What'd you say? Brace. Oh, right. Okay. I said brace. Ah, oh, fuck. I sh you shot five over <laughs> I there. I shot five on that one. That was my mistake. Buttstock loves to go like this. I'm holding it. It's so weird. You landed me! <laughs> ah, I threw one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, it's 250 points. 250 points? Yeah. Oh my god. 10, 11, 12. Hey, you did freaking this one. That was 8 notes. Thank you. That was 11 out of 18, I think. So, seven, eight, nine, ten, up here. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's cool. I have to aim low left. That's so bad. Oh. 
Oh. Oh. oh shit. Lock back. That one probably been in my hand, honestly. Oh, again. All right, so after running the vector, definitely noticed that the short barrel length was definitely easy to have a good side alignment. Um, the felt recoil was actually really nice for a nine millimeter uh, gun. Uh, it cycled really well. The mechanics, they all seem functional once you get a lot of training in there. The mag release, bolt, uh, slide lock, and the charging handle. Uh, they work pretty well, uh, no issues there. Oh, going for up position, uh, the vector, you're able to do it way faster. The, I run a 16 uh, inch barrel on an AR-15. Uh, did an AR cl eight hour class with that. My arm was so fatigued right after. And I feel like if you do a class with this vector, with a shorter barrel, it's definitely a lot lighter. And I feel like you're able to perform a lot better once you get the right um, tools onto this vector. But other than that, this gun runs pretty good. Uh, compared to an AR-15, definitely a lot more maneuverable, so that's for sure. So the model we have here today is STP Enhanced Model. This one only fires in semi-auto. Fortunately, we, don't, we can't get our hands on the SMG model, which fires in the additional two-round burst and full auto. Uh, Chris does offer other calibers, such as 45 ACP and 10 millimeter. Uh, the one we have today is a 9 millimeter variant. Forgot to mention this, but in the CRB model, it also comes in 22 LR as well as 40 Smith & Wesson. So with that general information out of the way, we can get right into it here. So at the rear here, we have this brace. Now if you see this here, you are able to fold. So it allows for that extra compactness. Now it does not have a buffer tube by design. So you are able to fire this while folded, unlike your standard AR. So the benefit of this is that it'll take up less space during storage. And if you are in tight areas such as a vehicle, this feature can come handy where you don't have that space to normally shoulder the firearm. So with this, you get a lot of mobility options with being able to fire when the brace is folded and good stability support with the brace folded out. So you get the best of both worlds here. So moving forward from the rear here, we got this, the grip here. The grip is like in this, huge area it's almost like a guard for your entire four bottom fingers here uh, the grip texture here is not that aggressive kind of feels like a painted wall they have some ribs here on the back to help so the con with this design where the grip is part of the upper receiver it does look cool however it is not interchangeable but there are other remedies where you can get talent grips here or reach out to your local gun shop and they'll stipple it for you so the positioning of the safety selector is rather interesting it sits right above the grip here. So, so the safety selector here is like a traditional AR-15 where you slip forward for on and then flip back backwards for off. Now it is ambidextrous as you can see on both sides here. So if you are left-handed, you, you wouldn't find any issues here. So moving on to the trigger here, Chris does list this as a single stage trigger. However, with our findings, we see that it is actually a two stage trigger. So it's got some pre-travel here to take up and then break through through the wall. And here goes to show that again with the reset and break. Now the break is not really crisp. It's more of like a roll through, like you're punching through it. It doesn't really have a very fine wall. It's just like you're rolling through mush. So lastly here, we have the trigger guard. It is enlarged, so if you are wearing gloves, you won't find it obstructing at all. So moving from the trigger to the top here. Now, as you see, there is a single Picatinny monorail, just much like you see on your standard carbine. Now this allows for a multitude of attachments such as red dots, flashlights, lasers, and magnifiers. There are also some pick rails here on the side and the bottom. Now to note, uh, this is only for the enhanced model. If you get a standard STP, you will not receive these side rails. So moving into the operating system, this is what really gives that vector that unique style that you see in a lot of sci-fi films and obviously Call of Duty. 
The operating system is a closed bolt delayed blowback system utilizing the Vector's signature Super V system. However, the 22 LR models, uh, they do use a linear traditional direct blowback that you see in your standard AR-15. So what is the Super V system? So basically, instead of the bolt traveling backwards like a traditional direct blowback system you see in AR-15, it's redirected downwards here and then go, goes right back up. Now, it does that so you can reduce felt recoil as well as muzzle rise under a rapid fire. Now, we don't really feel like you're getting the full benefits of this under semi-auto fire. However, it is still noticeable. Now, if you had the full auto version, that I believe is where you would get your full experience of the Super V system. So moving forward to the magazines here, the Chris Spectre does utilize standard Glock magazines. It does come with two of these 33 round Glock magazines. Now, Chris does offer extensions for your standard 17 round magazines, as long as your magazines are Gen 3 and later. So while we're on the topic of magazines here, we'll talk about the Magwell. Now it does have a cutout here in case you have any malfunctions and need to strip your magazine. Now additionally, I do wish there was a flared Magwell. So under stressful environments, you are more prone to failure. So that's just a little nitpicky thing. I do wish it was there to allow you to insert your magazine at ease. But there are some aftermarket parts available to add a flared Magwell. Moving forward to the mag release here, it is not ambidextrous, it is featured here only on the left side, but its placement is really great in theory as if you are going for a reload, instantly pop that on the way down, put another one in and then reassume grip immediately. However, due to the mag release's placement, it does not leave you much freedom and choice of what grip structure you prefer. So I prefer running a C-clamp grip. Now, why, when you wear gloves and you do a C-clamp grip or you're under stressful situations and you just don't get that proper grip right away, you may find yourself accidentally releasing that magazine under fire. So just above the magazine here, the Vector does feature a bolt release. Now its placement is really good as you go for the mag, drop it, put a new one in, press it, release the bolt, and then reaffirm grip. Now where I do find this to be rather annoying is that I do run a C-clamp. Now, we did run some drills on this, and under fire, I did find myself accidentally locking the bolt to the rear when I didn't mean to. So moving forward from the bolt release, now we have the charging handle. Uh, pretty self-explanatory, rack it back, it'll chamber you around. Now, a pretty nice feature about this is it does sit flush until you need to use it, so you can simply just bring it back here, rack it. Now, a really unique feature to the vector here is if you pull it slightly back here, just like that, it will allow you to see if one is in the chamber. So it's a pretty nice, easy press check to do. So here at the end, we get to the barrel. The barrel length is 6.5 inches, which is above average. It made of, it's made of 4140 chrome molly and finished in black nitride. The barrel is also threaded with a 1 in 10 inch twist and thread pitch is 1 half by 28. With the barrel length of 6.5 inches, it makes the vector pretty easy to maneuver around and is great for CQB environments. Now, what does this market feel or who is it for? We think this firearm is great for those who will find themselves using in close quarters environments where you won't have much space. From room clearing, to moving and transitioning around corners, to vehicle maneuvers, the compact size of the Vector will just excel extremely well. Chris also mentions on their site that the Chris Vector is the ideal choice for law enforcement and military seeking controllable compact weapon systems for close quarter combat environments. There are actually a few countries that adopted the Vector, such as Thailand, Panama, and Bangladesh. So one thing to note that all these countries have in common is just they so happen to be very densely populated urban areas where the Vector just makes a lot of sense to run. So getting into our final thoughts here with our experiences on the range, we think the Vector's compact size allows it to excel in CQP environments and tight areas where there just isn't much space. There's a reason why countries such as Bangladesh adopted the Vector as it is one of the most densely populated areas in the world. One thing to note, all of us ran the box drill on the AR-15 and the Vector and we were all way more gassed out running around with the full length AR. Keep aiming low! Oh. 
Oh. Well, I know there's a big difference in weight. When we're running around doing the box drill, uh, I was definitely a lot more exhausted running with the AR-15 than I was with the Vector, like, significantly. I think the weight literally, like, doubles when it's fully loaded, especially going from, like, a 9mm to a 5.56 platform. The weight transfer is huge. However, the Vector isn't without flaws. What do we mean by that? The safety selector was an un uncomfortable position for our thumbs and we found it way more difficult to actuate without having to break grip. As mentioned before, each of us had issues running a C-clamp grip while wearing gloves. With an improper C-clamp grip, you may find yourself hitting the mag release on accident or even holding the bolt catch down during fire. We also had a few malfunctions out in the range with some failure to extracts. We found after some research that the Vector does suffer from additional extractor spring wear. We did have to replace the springs early on to increase the tension after a while. And we've had reliable extraction ever since, but it is still something to note. However, the Vector is still a capable firearm as long as you're training with it. No matter what gun you're buying, you'll still suck without training. So get out there and get good. Anyways, that brings us to the end. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, share, and subscribe. Let us know in the comments on what you'd like to see, and we'll see you in the next one.